Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to week 12 uh, here in our course. And uh, I wanted to take a couple minutes and I wanted to um, do a video talking a little bit about uh, how to cross the finish line on the course and uh, describe in a little bit better detail um, what was coming up next. And so uh, many of you will see that uh, the whole course, the, the last unit here, is all opened up. Uh, and I'm going to be opening the um, additional labors for the final unit uh, next week. So we'll see uh, what that looks like. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the changes that I made to our course calendar that are going to make the course a little bit more um, doable for some of you. I know that there were people that were struggling to kind of keep up with, uh, with the pace. And I know this is a first semester writing course, which is challenging when you're in person and you add the, uh, the online nature of that um, and, and it can further complicate that situation. So um, I'm happy to make that accommodation. Uh, fortunately, we still meet all of the requirements for page count and uh, drafts and all of that um, with the modifications that I made. So um, let me just kind of walk through, I'm gonna share my screen and I wanna walk through the unit and uh, hopefully give everybody an opportunity to um, kind of wrap their head around the class if they have, or the rest of the class if they haven't already. So. All right, so I'm going to bring up Sorry. Okay. So we're in unit four, we're in persuasive essays and we're writing our education, we're doing the education paper. And so at this point, um, I've given about two and a half weeks for people to uh, watch Changing Paradigms of Education where Ken Robinson talks about some of the things that you know, are broken in our education system or at least are outdated in our education system. Um, we completed a discussion board for the best and worst memories from our school experience, just as a way to kind of talk about, you know, how uh, some of those antiquated practices may have seeped into your education or maybe see the ways that your education transcended those or maybe even how, you know, you, you have a fond memory of, of some of the things that Ken Robinson described, right? So it's, it's not necessary for you to adopt a contrarian view. If you believe school is working the way it should work, um, by all means, I encourage you to take that stance. You should have read Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Now, Pedagogy of the Oppressed is a super challenging uh, text, uh, but it's among the most transformative I've ever read. And if I were to give you the two minute version here, essentially Pedagogy of the Oppressed says that the major issue in schools is that it teaches the world as though it's, it's, it's not something that students live in. You learn, about the world, you don't learn about your place in the world. And you're taught things as though they're static. And they're, the big concept in Frera's uh, argument is this notion of the banking concept of education. The banking concept of education is this idea that students are just like empty vessels and education fills them up with the kinds of things that they need in order to be successful. The problem with this is that if you are just filling somebody up, all they're ever going to be able to do is pour that content back out, that they're not using it. And we all kind of see this, right? We've all taken classes where you know, you're asked to do things, you're asked to memorize things, you're asked to recite things or, or do a vocabulary test, right? And you memorize it really quickly so that you can do well on the test and then you never think about it again, right? And so the notion is that education should be a process where you know, we become um, more complex, more complete people because we know more about the world that we live in, right? That education should, uh, should not, you know, teach us things about the world as a static thing. It should raise our awareness about ideas we've never thought of so that we can exist in the world differently and do different things there. And so he gives us a problem with the pedagogy of the oppressed. He gives us the problem of the banking concept. And then he gives the solution of problem posing education in a practice. 
And so um, you should have completed that and the reflection. And the final two texts, College Fear Factor um, is a, uh, a book about the ways that fear about school and previous trauma in school impact our ability to be successful in an academic environment, right? And so the minute you feel scared, I, I remember uh, the story I always tell is when I was in um, fifth grade, right? My, my desk was really messy. Um, I, was, I was a messy kid. And I remember the teacher would come over and if your desk was messy, they would dump your desk and you wouldn't get to go to recess, right? And like you would sit in the middle of your mess and you have to clean it up. And I remember everybody looking at me and I remember feeling very strange and, and feeling, um, you know, embarrassed. And for a while, like in, in there, you know, in, in a number of different ways, we send messages to students that school is a place that they should be on guard, that they should be afraid of. You know, bullying does this. Authoritarian teachers can sometimes do this. Um, overly oppressive school policy can do this. There's all kinds of things in schools that uh, can cause adverse experiences. And then when we go back into a school, right, our amygdala, our flight or flight, flight or flight response, um, deliver this message that we're not safe. You know, I see desks, I see a chalkboard, I see a teacher at the front of the room, right? And when we, when the amygdala kicks in, blood rushes to our stomach, uh, our breathing gets heavier, right? Because we're ready to run um, in, in the case of, of, you know, being chased by a wild animal or something in our, our ancient past. But it doesn't make us strong, critical thinkers. And arguably, the more fear we feel, the more fear we feel, the, um, the less we're able to learn. And then finally, the last text here from degrading to degrading is all about the way that grades don't work, right? Traditional grading uh, systems um, deprioritize the kinds of learning that makes school important, right? So for instance, <clears throat> let's say you were gonna go to the gym and you hire a personal trainer. And at the end of eight weeks, you know, they give you a certificate and they say, congratulations, you're in shape. And you say, well, look, I, I don't feel like I'm in shape. I can't like run faster. I can't lift more. I didn't lose any weight. And they're like, oh no, you're in shape because I gave you the certificate. That would be ridiculous. We would never pay for that. And yet in so many spaces in our education system, right, we're, we're running after that certificate and uh, or running after that credential or we're running after that A, but the A doesn't mean anything because we never really benefited from the content that was supposed to get us there. So the idea, and I'm gonna stop sharing for a second here. Um, the idea is as we're going through these texts, um, that you should be thinking about like, which of these texts do you most identify with? Which of these texts are, is most important to your development as a student? And the ETA sheets will kind of help you identify some quotes and identify some spaces that work. Now in our paper for this, for this time around, I'm gonna go into our paper here, which I just opened up, so you probably haven't seen it yet. So in our paper, you're going to go in and it's asking us to write an argumentative essay. And you'll have to apologize. I know that the, um, the data on this, I opened the new one, but hold on. Bear with me, I'm sorry. So the paper in this is asking you to merge these concepts, right? So um, it asks you to take Frere and one other text, right? And uh, show how one argument either complements, agrees with, or disagrees with another argument, and what this shows us about education, right? So what do we learn about education? What argument can we make about our education that's supported by Paulo Freire, 
and at least one of the other texts that we read. Now, if you want to use all of the texts that we read, if you're struggling to get to 1,500 words, you want to bring additional examples in, you're more than welcome to do that. But it should revolve around a single clear thesis that makes an arguable claim about uh, Paulo Freire and one of the other texts that we read in this year. It should explain and connect readings from, bo uh, from both readings. And you have all these dates. This is on here for, for when I teach this in person. But uh, you have all these dates. Um, I'm going to release a separate video where I'm going to talk a little bit about MLA style. So for this, for this paper, um, it's going to be important that you incorporate MLA style. And then I'm going to move into, um, stop sharing. So once we do that, um, we're going to move into uh, your drafts. So I'm going to move, you're going to submit your rough draft. And for this, I added a new component to our drafting. Rather than having peer editing, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do an essay conference. Um, this, uh, I'll share here so you can see what I'm talking about. So this conference, uh, when you click on here, there's no attachments that you have to add. So this is an opportunity for you to have a meeting with me uh, where we talk about the, um, the paper that you're writing. So I'm going to schedule this out in 10 minute uh, increments. And I'm, I, as soon as I hang up here and before I post this video, um, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, before I post this video, I'm going to uh, create a schedule so that you can sign up for these classes. Um, and then the final piece of this, I go back in. So we'll complete the conference. I'll give you some notes. That way you have immediate feedback on those papers. And then once you have that feedback, you can submit that into your final draft. All right. Uh, the additional labor for unit two simply asks you um, to change the modality of the paper. And I'll talk more about that in a separate video um, in the, at the end of the course here. Um, the last piece, and I, I'm, this is longer than I like to make these videos. I know that people tend to stop watching um, if they're this long, but hopefully this is valuable to think about. Um, the last piece is if you wanna work for a grade above a B, right? So if you've completed both papers and your um, literacy narrative, and you've done the work along the way here, which many of you have, then you're going to earn uh, a B for the course. If you're good with a B, you can stop there. You can finish this paper and be done. If you'd like to work for an A, you can do one of two things. You can either complete um, three uh, shorter additional labor reflections. So the one for unit one, the one for unit two, and then an end of the semester reflection. Or you can complete, and I'm going to share my screen one last time. Oops, close it out. Or you can complete, I'll just, I'll just tell you, and then you can ask questions about it. Or you can complete the last module. So the last module is a project. Um, you are going to watch a couple of videos. You are going to do an ETA sheet. Uh, and you're going to either create a website or a short PowerPoint presentation with voiceover or a video. Um, you're going to create something in a new modality that talks about uh, linguistic justice as it's described. So the last unit is on linguistic justice. Um, and it, it talks about those, those ideas. If you're interested in doing that work, you can do that one unit. I imagine if you're thinking about it in your head, it's probably six or so hours of work. Um, you can do it during exam week. It's not due until the end of this course. Um, and I'm going to post a separate video on that uh, next week. All right, so that's, uh, and I detail all of this in my announcement from last week, so I'm sure you've seen it, but I just wanted to make sure that I said it. Uh, and that way, you know, you can, uh, you can make your plans for the end of the semester. So 
as always, if you have any questions, if you need anything, feel free to reach out, uh, set up an appointment with me, come see me in my office here, or uh, I'll take a phone call or do Zoom calls. Um, thanks again for all of your hard work, and uh, we are almost at the end of the semester. Thanks again.